is day four of commuting as a divorced gal. I forget that commuting is like really tiring. It felt really different to commute back and forth to the city and not to come home to my big house that I used to live in and to come home to my small apartment. Or I used to get into my car and drive home to my house and my ex, my husband would be there and my son. And now it's just, now it's my plants. I'm complaining, but it's like, ma'am, this is, this is, what did you think? Like you, you ended your 24 year marriage. Right. You sold your five bedroom house. You sold your dream. I'm not going to lie. Like it was really nice to be able to have people over and just to have everything like beautiful and perfect and matching and being able to go and sit outside in my backyard or um, now I don't have that uh, now my my kitchen is my living room and my living room is my kitchen notice how she didn't say anything about missing her family or being married it was all about matching silverware sets and living in a house instead of an apartment she misses the lifestyle not them but reality will hit her soon after she ends up lonely let's continue I thought I could talk about this I didn't realize how raw it was and I did not expect having a New York City office that I'm commuting into to stir up all of these feelings. I thought I was so past this. I thought I was so past this. I moved out two years ago. And I'm not. I had a whole wall in our house of like family portraits. And not in like a corny, horrible way, like in a cool way. Like I had great pictures. And, you know, I only kept the ones of my son. Right? This is one of them. <sighs> you know, like you put together a life with someone, right? And you think you're going to be with them forever. And that's your plan. And you go into it fully, earnestly thinking you're going to be with them forever. And then you're not. I took that of my son on a vacation. I think I was still trying, but unhappy, but trying. It's sad. So no one gets married thinking they're going to get divorced. You know, right? What is it? Half of all marriages or like how many marriages actually end in divorce? Like so many, right? A woman may sometimes end her marriage believing that life after divorce will bring newfound happiness and freedom. Initially, she might envision a future filled with excitement and personal growth, thinking this change will be the key to a more fulfilling life. However, the reality of divorce often sets in quickly. Within just a few days, the emotional weight and the challenges of her decision can become overwhelming. The loss of the life she once knew, coupled with the uncertainties of starting over, can lead to regret. Despite being aware of the statistics and the difficulties associated with divorce, she may have convinced herself that her situation would be different. This optimism can cloud judgment, leading to decisions that overlook the complexities and emotional toll of ending a marriage. Once the reality sets in, the regrets can become profound. What is a time where you felt that you failed, that you learned a valuable lesson from? <laughs> That's such a hard question. <laughs> Getting divorced was a big lesson. Okay. Yeah. How, how come? What happened? For a long time, you know, like in your 20s and 30s, like getting married was a big goal and I got married. And then I realized that that's not everything. Mm -hmm. And what I learned through being married was that knowing who you are, knowing your values and knowing your non-negotiables is so much more important than anything else. Mm -hmm. It could be more important than the person that you love. And that was a huge lesson for me. So do you think you didn't know yourself before getting married? I think I didn't really know how important my values were to me before I got married. What is true love like, in your opinion? When I find out, I'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> Why did it not work, if you don't mind me asking? Because I wanted to work so much that I was willing to overlook aspects of him and myself that didn't align with my true values, and that's why it didn't work. Here's why women regret divorce more than men. Financially speaking, women's lives get worse after the divorce, while men's get better. The standard of living for women goes down an average of 27%, while the standard of living for men 
goes up 10%. So you can see. The reason why our standard goes up is because men need very little to survive off of. What Dave Chappelle said, if a man could bang a woman in a cardboard box, he wouldn't buy a house. A man can literally live in the woods by himself with a dog and he'd be cool. You want to keep your standard of living? How about you not divorce your husbands and stay in your marriage? She finds herself grappling with the consequences of her actions, including the loneliness and disruption that divorce can bring. This experience serves as a reminder of the importance of considering the full impact of such life-changing decisions. Rather than finding the happiness she sought, she now faces the challenge of rebuilding her life amidst the regrets and reflections on what was lost. Hey, did you watch the... Um TikTok about this woman who says who was suspecting that her husband was cheating on her and she didn't have the evidence to back up the claim but her followers were like you know we're gonna do it for you and we're gonna not only that we're gonna go to his work for his workplace and cancel him and get him fired and then like what's weird is that the 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 the, the wife was like she didn't think things through it was like oh if they actually did that, you know, she's she's a stay-at-home mom. So it's like if her husband loses the job, she has no income coming in. And she fucked up. She fucked up royally. But I am really big on helping people understand that sometimes when your emotions are so high, it clouds your judgment and you say very irrational things and you act irrationally. That makes you the queen of whores! <laughs> now granted, as I'm listening, I realize that what he did, it didn't warrant this reaction. This is something else that's going on. A lot of men don't realize and women will vouch for me. We don't actually say what we mean. We say what we feel. <laughs> That's a very difficult thing for a lot of guys to comprehend because we hear what you say and then we think that's what you mean because men speak and think in terms of logic. I don't know what that is, but if it's German for cat strangler, then yes. And if you say something, we assume that's probably what you mean. But what you're saying is that often you might say something that you feel which isn't actually what you mean. Yes. That doesn't make sense. She's going on a deep end. So I'm like, all right, hold on, honey. You gonna let me speak? You gonna give me a little moment? I'll let you vent. Like at this point, this is over 30 minutes. I've let you vent, I've let you get it out. Do you want me to say anything? And she's like, no. Then why did you call me? I don't know. She's like, I already know what you are gonna say. No, I don't wanna hear that right now. Then what the hell is your problem? Many of you women are not really what you think you're cracked up to be. Like some of y'all are really not great people to be in relationships with. Y'all know I work with couples every single day and I'm gonna go ahead and make a list of everything that I have to work through. First things first, quit coming into relationships trying to make a man secure your insecurities that's your job if you lack confidence if you have low self-esteem if there's still trauma that you're operating in if you're self-critical if you're judgmental when it comes to yourself if you blame yourself if you're still operating in guilt and trauma and everything else baby that's for you to handle not him amen praise the lord who is more easily bored in relationships men or women women if women are more easily bored why are they more likely to want marriage and commitment status if women are strong and independent and don't need no man why does the pressure of marriage and commitment typically come from women they're liars after a couple days passed by once you know she's kind of like resolved in her mind her temper was better she was able to actually process things she calls me unfortunately the damage was already done in her marriage why did you do that why but she calls me and she says i need your help no i won't be doing that now we're working with something now let me make sure that i have the capacity to be able to help you so she was like in this situation kitty what would you tell a couple you're done it's over for you the main thing is that she kept on saying that she didn't need her husband. You ain't shit. My first go-to is, did you tell him that? Did you tell this man that you didn't need him? She says yes. Oh. Are you stupid or something? Lord Jesus. How did that go? What was his response? I'm done with you. He blew up. Okay, well, if you don't need me, I don't need to be here. They ended up sleeping in separate beds that night, didn't talk to each other for a couple of days. I heard no Spanish woman talking about she happy to be independent. We're very privileged to see it. It's very rare. 
I never seen a white woman in my life on a gram saying I'm independent. F F whatever. Right here. Black woman. Even Taraji P Henson has a, a reel saying, "Hello, black men, the audience. We want you back." This, this is because they realize mm -hmm. it's not working because black women they seem to like embrace the struggle. The struggle has been so normal for for them coming up. Now they embrace it. Yeah. Independent. F a man. <laughs> man for what? And let me just say this, ladies. You have to understand that when you get in your little feelings and you start acting all emotional and everything and you say certain things to him you know you can't get that back you say things to tear him down you say things to belittle him you say things to degrade him you say things that that you know are going to take him out you go you literally go for the juggler right but you can't get that back and now you sit up here begging him to come back oh baby i'm sorry i did me yes you did you meant it when you said it in the episode i regret my divorce a woman dumps her partner and four children to become a single parent. The episode discusses the reasons why women keep losing their husbands and the bold declaration of one woman that she would never remarry if her husband died. A woman discusses five ways women lose good men and how to avoid them. Thinking nothing of him, ineffective communication, not caring about how your actions affect him, being egotistical, unwilling to make concessions, and allowing your vulnerability and unresolved trauma to make his life a living hell. Do you feel like you don't need him? I don't need him. I don't need him. I can do this alone. I'm independent, blah, blah, blah. How's that working out for you? All right, cool. So leave him. <sighs> You're not supposed to say that. There's a whole sector of women, seriously, that's like, we don't need, every time we go to the comments, we don't need y'all, ha ha, we doing it all that's by ourselves. That's crazy to We me. don't, like, and I'm, most of the time when I go to their profile, I'm like, no one's looking for you. You're no man's first choice. That's not true. Stop trying to recruit these young girls and have them recycle your, your way of thinking to pull them on your side because these young girls and women that are aligning themselves with the interests of men, they have a chance to go on and have a happy and, health, happy and healthy and fruitful relationship. That's not the answer I wanted, Kitty. Well, stop saying that you don't need them. But wait, there's more. You married this man. This is your partner in life. Stop telling your spouse that you don't need him. This is your husband. I'm afraid she has a point. I think for me, you can be as gorgeous, you can be as cute, pretty fine, whatever, got all, got it all. If you disrespect me or like you don't respect me, we can't do it. He's a genius. I've just been in so many uh, relationships where everything was good, you just didn't respect me. And then that's extra baggage I gotta take to work. I come home after a long day and I know you're probably gonna scream at me because I didn't do X, Y, Z. Instead of, babe, you can just talk to me, just tell me. It ain't nothing, just tell me. We ain't gotta scream at each other, son. Now some arguing is healthy, but there's a respectful way to argue with me. See, because when you argue, truth comes out. A lot of hard areas come out, but there's a way to tell me instead of, are oh, you this, you that. Tapping my dark places as a man. Amen, praise the Lord. Respect his space. Like stop becoming so preoccupied and hyper aware of what a man has going on. As soon as you see his mood is off a little bit, you start becoming overwhelming. What's wrong, what's wrong, what's wrong? Let me tell you how men are. A lot of men, when they are going through stuff, they may end up withdrawing or retreating because they're trying to figure it out. They're not always upset at you. Their moods are not changing just because of you. People go through things in a way that men are, they don't express themselves as much as we do as women. It's okay, give that man some space. We agree with this statement. If you but replace the word scared with the phrase unattracted to, nobody's afraid of strong black women. We're just not attracted to them. Damn! Stop being afraid to tell a bitch no. What, what did you say? No, fuck no, I ain't having it. Hey, no. we want a man to be like, no. We know. Shut your ass down. Yeah, we know. Yeah. We just don't have the money yet. Well, why not? It makes it way better when oh, you, nah, you don't say no. Oh, no, I don't about the money. money. I'm still saying no. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm saying That's true, it's though. just better when you have money. Oh, no, of course. No. You know why? Because, because <clears throat> we feel like whatever you, you your reason is holds value. And there it is. How much patience is a man supposed to have when dealing with broken women? A lot of men do fall into this idea of, well, because we're the man, we're supposed to be more patient and fix her. But as you tolerate a lot of the nonsense, you lose her respect. And now you don't actually gain her love. All right. Because she sees you taking, she, she sees you accepting the, because a lot of times that toxic energy turns into disrespect, turns into just mistreatment, all these different things. She's not going to love you more because you're enduring nonsense. So you just have to be clear. Like, listen, I love you. I care care about you here's the plan if you're with me i will support you if you're not you have to leave right now but then she goes well why did why did he draw back why did he just walk out why did he just stop talking to me because you told him you don't need him <laughs> 
if he doesn't feel valued, but you simply don't need him, you just hit his confidence. You just really took a jab at his esteem. Why is he going to be motivated to do more when you just specifically told this man? In, in other words, he's not valuable to you. Modern women have no respect for men in their lives and their efforts are ignored. Accountability is a nemesis for women as they feel entitled to show kindness to their men. The patriarchy sees it as oppression for women to show kindness to their men as everything has to be about their happiness. If a woman experiences unsettled injury in their relationship, she will bring unsettled damage back into the relationship. The episode highlights that the other side may not always be better, and it is essential to be aware of these issues and strive for better relationships. We signed our final divorce papers last week, and I just got notified today that the lawyer sent the papers to the court today to be signed by the judge. Everybody keeps thinking that I'm handling this divorce so well, and I'm not. I'm not okay. Next week would have been our nine-year anniversary. And I don't know what I'm supposed to do with myself. I didn't want this. I never wanted this. And it hurts and it sucks and I... I'm okay. I know that I'm gonna be okay. But right now it really sucks. <sighs> and I feel like I can't breathe. Once a man cries over a woman and he comes to his senses, he's done. I've been trying to tell y'all, bro, that's a canon event, bro. When there's a woman that is done with you, you start crying like you're dead ass, popping snot bubbles. You got tears running down your face. You're done. There's nothing else to talk about. When you combine those chain of events with the fact that he has a decent head on his shoulder, he realized him crying over something like this to something that's really not benefiting his life. So when he comes to his senses, he's going to think to himself like, OK, I cannot let myself get to this point again. I can never let anybody else get the opportunity to play with me like this and then all the innocence he's previously had pretty much goes out the window no now he's skeptical about every interaction he's not gonna just take your word just because you're good for it he doesn't do this because he wants to he does this because he learns from his mistakes and he's getting smarter with every interaction you got friends yeah you need your friends absolutely i need my friends okay why do you need your friends we go down a list they're my support whenever i'm going through things i can talk to them we share memories we laugh together we go through life together all of that okay you need your friends do you have those same moments with your husband i don't need a man for that i heard her smack her lips but I a woman marries for lifestyle upgrades not love she will never appreciate her life until she realizes she was the problem all along. Admitting fault is a kryptonite for women, as they blame their husbands for everything. Once she starts working and doing everything herself without her husband, she starts pining for what she lost. This doesn't hit her all at once, as she dives headfirst into the dating market, unaware of how it works post-divorce, especially as a single mom. Most men her age aren't looking to play daddy to someone else's kid. She will have to hit the wall before realizing the grass isn't always greener. That's all for today on Alpha Male. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like and subscribe button. Don't forget to turn on notifications. You can support the channel by becoming a member or sending a super chat. Share your thoughts in the comments. See you tomorrow.